Okay, today we'll start uh, uh, discussing chapter nine, which uh, deals with energy in chemical reactions. Um, so whenever a chemical reaction takes place, uh, it has to, uh, like two steps has, have to happen. The first step is gonna be starting with breaking bonds in the reactants uh, to make free atoms. And then when these free atoms combine to form new bonds, it will form products. So the first step, which is breaking bonds, is going to need energy. You need to put energy into the reactants in order to break bonds in their molecules. Uh, and when free ions combine to form bonds, it will be actually releasing energy into the environment. Uh, just to remind you why is that, if you remember when we discussed bond formation with the potential energy diagram, you start with free atoms at high energy, and as they get closer to each other, they will decrease the energy of the system because of the attraction, then eventually the repulsion of the nuclei will cause the energy to go back up. So here at this point is the free uh, atoms, and here at this point is the bound atoms in, in a molecule, right? And it's clear that the energy of free atoms is gonna be higher than the energy of the bound atoms. So whenever you move from free atoms to bound atoms, which is bond formation, this is gonna release that difference in energy into the environment, right? But if you go back from bound uh, atoms to free atoms is going to require that you put energy into the system to make it go up to the high energy uh, system of free atoms or, or for bond uh, breaking. So bond breaking is going to always need energy and bond formation is going to always release energy. So that adds one more ingredient to any chemical reaction because just mixing reactants is not going to make a reaction take place. It has to be accompanied uh, by, chemical, uh, by energy changes. So one more ingredient in any chemical reaction is the amount of energy that will get in or out of the reaction. Uh, so one more component in any chemical equation is going to be the energy change it changed during this chemical reaction. And the field of study that studies uh, this topic is called thermodynamics uh, or thermochemistry. And it's the field that studies the energy changes during any chemical reaction. And it's gonna tell us uh, if a reaction is likely to occur from the energy point of view. And it's gonna also tell us the eventual outcomes of a chemical reaction that we should expect. In this context, uh, we want to start by defining a couple of terminologies. So the object of interest to you, the object that you are studying, or the samples that you are studying, or the reaction that you are studying is called the system. Anything else other than that sample or that reaction is called the surroundings. So if you're doing a reaction in a uh, beaker or an Erlenmeyer, that Erlenmeyer is the system. Anything else around that early Meyer is called the surroundings. And the systems in thermodynamics can be classified into three different classes, the, uh, depending on uh, how much energy or substances are allowed to exchange between the system and the surroundings. So uh, let's, let's imagine we're talking about a coffee bottle right here. The coffee bottle is your system. This is the object of interest to you. If it's completely open uh, and it allows the exchange of mass in terms of water vapor and energy in terms of heat, this is called an open system, right? So it allows exchanging mass and energy. Second class, if you actually close it with a cap, this is gonna prevent exchanging water vapor, but it's not gonna prevent exchanging energy. 
this system that does not allow exchanging mass, but it only allows exchanging energy, is called a closed system. The third class is if you actually insulate it, put it in an insulated uh, bottle. This is going to be an isolated system. It doesn't allow exchanging either uh, energy or uh, mass with the environment. Um, a second very important topic here is the uh, uh, usually confusion between two different concepts in this context. The first one is heat and the second one is temperature. Those are not the same concepts. Heat is equivalent to thermal energy. It is the transfer of thermal, of thermal energy between two objects at different temperatures. Temperature is just a measure of thermal energy, but it's not equal to thermal energy. It's not the same as thermal energy. So when you have a warm object, this is going to have a higher temperature. And if you, if you have a cold object, it's going to have a lower temperature. Thermal energy is going to move from the hot object to the cold one. And that transfer of thermal energy is called heat. And it's going to keep transferring thermal energy till it eventually uh, stop when the temperature of the two objects is the same. And in this case, the two objects are called to be at thermal equilibrium. Just to explain uh, this with an analogous comparison here, uh, let's uh, imagine we have two containers, A and B, that contain water. The amount of water in A is larger than the amount of water in B. Amount of water is kind of uh, equivalent to, uh, so uh, amount of water is equivalent to thermal energy, right? The height of water though in A is smaller than the height or the level of water in B. So the level of water is equivalent to temperature, right? So what controls the flow of water from one container to the other is the level, not the amount of thermal energy or the amount of water. So water is going to flow from the high level container to the low level container in this direction. And it's going to keep flowing till eventually the level of water is going to be the same. That's the same thing in thermal energy. The uh, thermal energy is going to flow from the high temperature object to the low temperature object till the temperature of both of them is going to be the same, which is equivalent to the level of water in the two containers. But this has nothing to do with the amount of thermal energy in both of them, right? So uh, I hope this clears the confusion between the two con uh, concepts. Um, so uh, whenever a system ex is exchanging energy with the surroundings, it can go in one direction or the other. So it can go from the system to the surroundings or from the surroundings to uh, the system. When the uh, process uh, or the heat transfer occurs from the system to the surroundings or to, to the environment, this is going to be called exothermic process. So an example for this, when you uh, uh, cool down some water from the liquid phase to the uh, solid phase, that is going to actually release energy from water to the environment. So actually heat will go from water to the environment. 
So that's an exothermic reaction. So, and our, our reference here is the system. So if you consider uh, heat transfer as Q, so Q is coming out of the system, which means the system is actually losing energy. So Q is negative, right? Uh, a reaction uh, like burning hydrogen with oxygen is going to be the same. It's going to release energy into the environment, which means the system is losing energy. So the change in energy in the system is negative. Q is negative, right? On the other hand, if heat is going from the surroundings to the system, that means the system, the energy of the system is increasing. So uh, if you want to melt some ice, you have to provide some heat from an external source from the surroundings. So actually heat Q is going into the system, which means Q is positive. It increases the energy of the system. Any reaction like this, like for example, decomposition of mercury oxide here, it has to uh, consume energy. So you have to provide energy into the reactants first for the reaction to take place. So the, in this case, the energy will get absorbed by the system, which means the energy of the system increases, which again ma makes the sign of Q as heat transfer positive because it increases energy of the system, right? So um, typical way to represent chemical energetics of chemical reactions is uh, an energy diagram like the one we see here. We will put a scale of energy that increases upward and then put the substances depending on their energy, right? So higher energy substances will be on top, lower energy substances will be down. So if you have a reaction where higher energy substances react to form lower energy substances, that means that your system will lose the difference in energy into the surroundings. So that is a typical uh, uh, case for a, an exothermic reaction. So any arrow that goes down is exothermic change, right? Um, on the other hand, if you have a change where you start from reactants with lower energy and you get products with higher energy, so that's going to be a change with an arrow going up. So you have to actually provide that difference in energy. So your reaction or your system has to absorb that much energy from the surroundings. So that's an endothermic reaction, which means Q is positive because it increases, while in the first example, Q was negative because energy of the system actually decreases, right? So any arrow up in a chemical, in an energy diagram is an endothermic change. Um, so the first